Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Mining the Commons. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to post comments and questions on last week's video. And one of those questions comes from Stacy. Stacy writes, I really don't want to do anything else but lay there. But after hours of that and also trying other things, I am miserably bored and feel like the night will never end and break down. I love a video on how to handle the painful hours of boredom. Stacy, I can remember this time uh, during my insomnia journey, and it was very frustrating. Uh, I remember it got to a point where I ran out of everything that I can think of. I'd made a list of things that I could do that'd be entertaining, right? Watching TV, uh, reading, coloring, and whatever. I mean, I just remember watching so many YouTube videos, uh, just feeling like I'd, I'd watched everything that there was. So. I, I, it really felt like for me, it was, it was turning to feel like, like a mental prison where I was just sitting there doing time and the boredom was overwhelming on top of the exhaustion and, and all the, the physical sensations, the heart palpitations, uh, the headaches, the buzzing eyes, ears, and, and countless of things that not only I'm going through during this time, but so many other people, right? So. As I was reading this question, the, the first thing that popped into my head was the movie Groundhog Day uh, with Bill Murray. It was from uh, 1993. Groundhog Day is about a weatherman who's doing a story in a small town about the groundhog festivities. And what happens is this is uh, a, an assignment that he wasn't very excited about doing. So he goes there, wants to get out of there as quick as possible, do the story and leave. And a horrible storm comes in and they get snowed in and they can't leave. He goes to bed and this was probably one of the most unpleasant days for him. And like I said, he just wanted to get it over and done with. What happens, unfortunately, is the next morning he wakes up and realizes that it's Groundhog's Day all over again. And the story is basically that he gets to live this day over and over and over again. Sound familiar? So just like insomnia for us, it feels like we're living in a nightmare over and over and over again. So this movie, the character, when he wakes up and starts noticing that nothing is changing, that he's actually reliving the same day over and over again, his first response is fear, frustration, confusion, right? Very similar to us when, when we start dealing with insomnia. And so he tries to figure out ways to ground himself, literally find a way to figure out what's going on and how to fix the problem. And as he reaches out to his coworkers, they don't understand what he's talking about. It doesn't make any sense because he's the only one going through this experience. And so as we watch throughout the movie, he starts finding or looking for ways to solve the problem as soon as possible. So. As he's trying everything he can, I remember, I think one of the scenes he tries to get in a car and just drive out of town and nothing that he does is working. No matter what he tries, he wakes up the next day back into the same day again. The alarm goes off at the same time, the same song or music is playing on the radio and he has to live it over and over again. What ends up happening is that he starts going through all these different emotions, right? First all is, first of all, like we mentioned, fear and confusion, and then trying to find a way to fix it. And then he starts figuring out ways that he can uh, comfort himself and everything he's doing and trying isn't working. And he gets to a point where he is just feeling so worn out, so desperate, so tired that he just doesn't know what to do. So as time keeps going. He decides that one day, well, if I'm going to live in this nightmare, I'm going to start doing something or I'm going to start doing things that I might enjoy. So remember, one of the scenes was he decided to learn how to play the piano. Always wanted to learn to play the piano. And so he thought, well, I don't have anything better to do. And the day is going to keep repeating itself. The only thing I can do is choose a response. I can change what I do with that day. And so I remember this, and there's a scene, it's a small town. So he finds this woman who is a music teacher and goes to her house. And at that time, 
she's teaching a little boy to play the piano. He knocks on the door. She opens it. He pulls out a huge wad of money and says, I want to learn to play the piano and I want to start doing it right now. And of course, since it's a comedy, the next scene is the woman kicks a little boy out of the house and Bill Murray starts learning to play the piano. And he keeps doing this every single day over and over again. And of course, for her, this is a brand new day every single day, except for him. But the more time passes, the more he starts to get better and better at the piano. So the story continues that he starts to do all these other things that he would enjoy doing. I think he started learning a, a new language, um, so a bunch of different things. And he just started improving himself because, again, he's just stuck and started giving up any efforts to try and make any changes. So as he started to use his time wisely, he actually started enjoying himself, learning things, experiencing new things, and still living within this environment that just kept repeating itself over and over again. Uh, he also started uh, making friends and building relationships with all the people in that town. Of course, the following day, nobody would remember these conversations that he was having with everybody, but he did. And he got to know everybody. He literally went around the entire town and just got to know everybody very well. And at one point, he thought, okay, well, what if I started helping other people? And I remember one specific scene where there was this homeless person that at the beginning of the movie, he kept walking past and not even making eye contact or acknowledging. And so he decided to walk up to him and serve him, right? He started spending time with him. He bought him, I don't know if he bought him lunch or dinner or whatever. He just got to know him. And so you see this, this, this development in going from afraid, uh, completely in a, a defense mode to learning and growing and using that time wisely to better himself. So the story is kind of a, a long way around this, but to answer your question, Stacy. Um, so I'd love to know how to handle the painful hours of boredom. Well, maybe, uh, similar to this movie, the idea is if we're in a situation where we really can't do anything about it, maybe let's start doing some things that we can potentially enjoy. And maybe there's things that we've never even tried before. I remember for me, when I ran out of reading and watching TV and coloring, and I was so bored of it. I started trying new things. Remember, I started uh, learning to make candles. I started uh, to play the guitar. And just whatever random things to really occupy my time. And I also decided that during the day, it was such a precious time that I would spend time with my kids. In the evenings, my kids tend to go to sleep pretty late. So 11 o'clock, sometimes 12 o'clock, they'd be playing video games. I go upstairs and hang out with them and play video games as well. I've never been a video game person by any means, but I started enjoying my time when I was awake. And as I started doing those things, I truly started to let go. Letting go to the point where I, I looked at my time at night as enjoyable. Because I didn't have another choice. There wasn't a, an alternative for me to, to jump out of this, this prison. Um, I was stuck. I was in it. And so what can I do to better experience the night? So that was really something that was super beneficial for me. Now, I still felt tired. I felt I had, you know, heart palpitations. I had uh, buzzing in my head. My eyes were heavy. I, I didn't feel very good. But I thought, well, if I don't have a choice, just like in the movie, I'm just going to have to keep reliving this. What's the best way for me to relive this? What's the best approach I can take for me to take advantage of this opportunity and make the best of it? And in doing so, a lot of my focus on trying to get through the night started shifting into what else can I learn? How can I better myself? How can I do something different? And that was definitely super helpful for me. Well, Stacy, I hope this was helpful for you. 
Uh, I hope you can find some things uh, when you're struggling, when absolute and total boredom uh, in the middle of the night to try and find some things that you might enjoy doing to help pass the time. And the more you, you start shifting in thoughts and views about the experience, the easier it'll get with time. Um, definitely with something like I said, I experienced it was difficult, but the best way through it is, is how we respond to things. Um, so that is all for this week. Um, again, please post any comments on this video or questions that you may have, and I'll go through them throughout the week and answer them. The video should come out every Monday, uh, was central standard time about 1 PM. I thank you all for joining me this week. And again, uh, this, this journey through insomnia can be a very difficult one. Be kind, be patient with yourself, and you will get through this. If you need additional uh, support, you can jump on our website and join the immunity program where you can talk to coaches and you have a group that you can be part of, that you can get support from as well. There are people that are just like you that are struggling through sleep. They're going to be going through different stages of, of their, their uh, insomnia, but I found it very helpful for me. We also have uh, quite a few uh, certified coaches that you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one, uh, call with that you can uh, receive support that way as well. Until then, take a wonderful care of yourselves. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Hi there, it's me, Coach Daniel, and I hope it is obvious to you to what degree we at the Sleep for School really try to put out content that will help you on your path to peaceful sleep and peace of mind. I hope you really enjoyed the video that you just watched. Now, some people don't learn the best by watching videos, but rather by reading. And I want to share a little tip with you. Um, the books that most people really talk about having helped them is This Is Now and then It's Better Than Forget It. But I think most people miss out on my personal favorite, which is Tales of Courage. All of my books are available on Amazon, but Tales of Courage is special. Because in Tales of Courage, we've taken 26 success stories from the channel and we've taken sort of the most powerful language, the most inspirational and educational parts of those interviews and put them in a book. And I think it is really, really so strong, so powerful when you uh, read those words from other people who left the, left the, left the struggle. And uh, that's my little tip to you. Um, Tales of Courage, I think, is, is a great book. And it's available on Amazon, of course. So uh, if that's appealing to you, you can have it head over, over there and, and get a copy. And, and, but uh, and more than anything else, I just want to say thank you for being here. Thanks for supporting the channel. And I uh, can't wait to see you again. Bye for now.